All right, hey folks, Technivorous here. Today we are going to run through three quick Kira questions. So uh, I have them up on the screen here. The first is from Ryan Ryan Kelly, excuse me. The second and third are from Francois Genest. I hope I'm saying that right, but who knows? Sorry if I butchered it. So uh, from Ryan Kelly, we have Hi, I am new to 3D printing, and I know it's a stupid question. There's no stupid questions. In Kira print settings, where it says the profile standard quality point to low quality 0.28 etc then the layer height what's the difference I've been using standard quality 0 0.2 millimeter and my layer height from between two excuse me from between 0.2 to 0.4 and not sure if that's right thanks so just a quick look at I still have this up from the last question just a quick look at what he's talking about um, when you're in the profile here some of these when I'm at standard quality it is saying 0.2 millimeter layer height. So, um, w what the difference he's asking about is the difference between that, I didn't mean to click on it, and the layer height here, because I can change this to say 0.16. Um, and it stays in the standard quality and still shows 0.2 up here. Now it's gonna print at 0.16. Uh, what, what's going on here is all of this stuff basically is the difference between um, it, it, it's not really the height setting that changes when you click these the other settings are kinda slightly tuned more for printing at that height so, such as some speeds may be slowed down some temperatures might be turned up slightly things like that uh, for the most part I end up going through whatever quality profile I'm in I, I, I never really change this um, I end up going through and setting my settings directly based on my needs at the time and even though profiles are nice to have if you're in a hurry or in a production situation where you're printing thousands of things on hundreds of printers in a farm then it makes sense but for the most part I recommend going through and checking all of your settings one by one each time that you print something different just to just to be sure um, and I don't mean every setting I just mean your basic settings you know the top ones print speed uh, temperature make sure you got your fan on or off depending on what filament you're printing with things like that so uh, I hope that answers your question. You don't really need to worry about this at all as long as you're setting your height here and your settings down below that are changed to correspond with it. And it might not even really be a change. You can go through there and see what all the differences are by opening those profiles. But then I lose all the settings that I have changed myself, so I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see here. Sorry about that. My phone keeps going off. Uh, the next questions are... Okay, so... Great video series, just a few questions about function that I cannot find. Question number one, how do you set the display to have the informative colors like red for places where the support is required? All my displays are flat yellow. Question two, is there a way to remove the printer identification prefix that Kira adds before the file name? So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove the prefix right now. You can see right down here when I save this, this is the file that it's going to tell me uh, that's what it's going to save it as. Uh, if I click slice and then save this object, you know, let's just slice it. Uh, it'll recommend that as the name, but then I can change the name there. I can also delete this down here and do it before I save it. But if you want to get rid of that permanently, you need to go into the preferences and configure Kira. And let's see, I think it's in general. I know it's in here. I just got to find it. Let's see, just give me a second. It's been a while since I messed with it. You can see I still have it on down here. Add machine prefix to job name. That's what it is. If you unclick that and then click close, um, it'll save those settings and then it'll stop doing that to you. You can always, of course, turn it back on if you're running multiple machines and you need that, but generally, since I'm slicing for this machine, um, I, I don't need that either. So. The next question you asked was about getting the different color for the overhangs and stuff. Let's see if I can get an example of what you're talking about here. Um, so here I'm changing my material color and if your overhang color is the same as your material color, it's not going to show up right. Um, but in most cases you should see it. Let's, there we go. Uh, and 
I'm still not getting an overhang. We can go in here and adjust the overhang. Let's see, support, generate support angle. Let's make that five degrees. Okay, so uh, what he's talking about is all of this red area you see here. How do you make that visible so you can see it? So basically, um, that is part of the theme here, uh, but you can also see it here, it, it, viewport behavior, display overhang. So the color is going to be determined by what theme you're using, but whether or not it shows up is going to be whether or not this is clicked. And I highly, highly recommend leaving it clicked so you can see where those overhangs are going to be because that's where it's going to print your support. So uh, I hope that was helpful to you. That's the end of this episode. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I would be happy to jump on and make you a video. Other than that, leave a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I will put another video right here for you to check out. And I hope that you enjoy it. Could be a video. Could be a playlist. Who knows? I do have some awesome Cura settings in 5 minutes or less playlists. They go over pretty much all of these settings individually. So I'll put a card for that up at the very top too if you're interested in checking it out. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. Technivorous out.